Hello, my name is Ariel Lest, and thank you for watching. So today I got a question on my YouTube channel from someone named Salah Sukri. And this person says, hi, thanks for the nice video. Let me please ask this. How can I place an image on indirect angle of a mobile screen mockup? Let's say you have a mockup image of an iPhone in the hand or on a ta table with that indirect angle. Is there a way to place an image to fit that iPhone screen properly in Affinity Designer? Thanks again. Okay, yes there is, okay, and it's not as simple as Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, but it's actually, I mean, in some ways, I would say it's simpler, but in a lot of ways, maybe not. It's confusing at first, especially if you're new. I'm rather new to it, so to me, it threw me for a loop, because I actually didn't realize I didn't know how to do it until, um, I don't even know, like a few weeks after using it. So the first thing to do is to understand how the free transform kind of works in Affinity Designer. If you go to edit, there is no free transform like Adobe Photoshop. However, if you have a shape or something on your page, a layer, you're going to see this bounding box. And if you are on your move tool, you can manipulate it. So one of the easiest ways to manipulate something is to rotate it. You can do that that way. And then if you want to kind of slow it down and keep it simple, if you hold shift, it will do it kind of like this. So it kind of keeps it more controlled. So that could definitely be very nice, especially if you want to add a specific angle. I think that would definitely help. Because it goes, I believe, 15 degrees around in each increment when you hold shift. Okay. So another thing you can do is if you hold this, you can take, you can squish it down by going down and kind of going out a little bit. You can squish. And same thing this way. Or you can, if you hold shift, it will just resize it and keep it out of shape if you hold shift. And the same thing here, you kind of can squish it to the side if you hold it this way. And it's the same thing with this angle. So like, if you understand how to do that, let's review. So this with this little arrow thing, rotates. You have to be on a corner box. If you hold shift, it'll rotate, rotate at 15 degree increments. And this will also rotate, just to let you know. Now, if you have this arrow that's like pointing diagonally, diagonally sorry i'm sorry i can't speak <laughs> not even gonna lie you can hold it and push it down and that will squash it you can take it um to the sides and that will squash it you hold shift that will just resize it and keep it at its same um proportions so those are the basics of that now here's the thing that will probably save you okay if you are really trying to squash this and kind of get it at a different perspective if you go up here, you will see these two pointing arrows that are pointing different directions. And with this, it will lean it. And that is extremely helpful, especially like let's say I was trying to squash this onto the ground and make it appear like it's maybe even at a shadowed kind of angle. If I want to squash it, I can do that very easily and make it even to the point where it looks like it's laying down. So this is a very, very easy way to warp perspective. Let's say I might, might even want it a little bit more severe. I can do that and then take it down like this. And then it even looks like it's laying down. Might want to rotate it a bit, et cetera, things like that. So that is a very easy way to make it the circle that was standing up look flat. Now, how do you take that with an image? Now, with an image, there are a couple ways of doing this which actually to demonstrate this, I kind of messed up because I already did this video and messed up. So, <laughs> oh well. Anyway, so if you hold down on your mouse button, like from the corner, what you can do is select all your layers. And then from this, you could do the same thing. Just kind of take it, squash it. I know I'm missing a part of my layer. And that's something that happens sometimes when you're doing this and that annoys me. One of your options is you can group these layers and I believe if you hit control G, that will group them all. Yes, I believe that did. Okay, so if you hit control G, that will group them all. I don't particularly want that though, so I'm gonna ungroup them. So that's one way you could do it. You can also select group right here. But let's say that's annoying, you don't wanna deal with it. Let's say you just wanna export the, pot, the file as its own image, but you don't want the background. What you can do is go to file, document setup, and then under color, it will show up under dimensions first, go to color, and then hit transparent background. Once you have that locked, you're gonna go file, and then you're gonna go to export, and you're going to export it as a PNG. Now with your PNG file, which I already have mine saved, 
you are going to take this truck. I have truck vector transparent, so I know what it is. You're going to take this down and you're going to resize it. I'm holding my shift key so things stay kind of normal as possible. Okay, and then we are going to bring up the hand holding phone image and we are going to force it to fit in there. <laughs> and for this, it's actually going to be pretty easy because it's not at a severe angle. It's gonna probably turn it a bit and voila, it fits. So a lot of it's about eyeballing it. If I really wanted this to lay flat though, I could easily do that same as I've done that before by squashing it, essentially. Because that's essentially all you have to do is squash it to make it lay down. And maybe take the vector and play around with it. So like, let's say this is at an extreme angle. And I wanted to do that, I could do the same thing, just move it around. So that's the basics of it. You're just going to pretty much want to play with it and like squash it down by playing around with the different ways that Affinity lets you manipulate photos. This is the same with Affinity Photo and Designer. 